I think just being here after 35 years just reminds me that all these people, even though I haven't seen a lot of them in 35 years, I don't think that I'll ever experience family as much as the people that I grew up with here. Terra Nova was always my favorite place. We're Michael and Holof. Together with our German Shepherd, Kana. This is for you. Oh. We've been traveling full time around the United States in our camper van. Kana, what you doing? We arrived in Canada to explore the vast land of the Great White North. So come, join us and travel around Canada in our home on wheels. Previously, we were in Gander, Newfoundland to attend the 20th year commemoration of 9-11 where we met a few real-life characters from the Broadway show Come From Away, as well as attended memorial events around the city. But now I see. You know, I didn't even 100% check to make sure that was diesel. But first, you've always got time for Tim Horton. There he comes. Thank you. Oh, burning, burning, yes. burning. Happiness. Tin bits, or as we call them, breakfast. <laughs> Happiness in the box. After Gander, we continued on to Terra Nova, Newfoundland, an area that's well known as a Canadian national park. Look how clear the water is. This is incredible. As well as a place that has a personal connection with my family. We are in Terra Nova National Park. Terra Nova National Park is a big park on the eastern side of Newfoundland. It's one of two national parks on the island, and we're gonna be here for a few days. So the visitor center has a very complete introduction to the national park. So logically, this is where we're gonna start our journey. Establish, you know, like everywhere you go. Of course, we had to get our national park stamps here. We decided to get the Discovery Pass, which is actually an annual pass to enter any national park sites here in Canada. It costs 140 Canadian dollars for two people, plus guests, I think they're up to seven people. Highly recommend it if you spend some time here in Canada. Be sure when you come into Terra Nova National Park Visitor Center that you take a look at these introductory videos to the park, the Dark Sky Project, moose management and all that. These are great videos and they're only a couple minutes long each. So if you get a chance, come in and sit down and watch a few of them. They're really good. They have an excellent exhibit on habitat here in Terra Nova, including one of these viewing tanks. Unfortunately, it's not like a aquarium touch pool that we could touch animal and whatnot, but this is pretty cool. Lots of native animals here to observe. Size of that lobster, there's no way that would taste good. I think that would taste good. No. So a spruce tree secretes gum, which gets really kind of hard on the outside of the tree. And when we were kids, we used to pick it off the tree and chew it. It hardens faster than regular chewing gum, but it does taste good and it does chew like gum. One of the first things we're going to do at Terra Nova National Park is Sandy Point Trail. It's one of 11 trails that are here. This one is actually nice and flat. Look at all things flying off on the air. Pebbles in my shoe already and we haven't even been on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a boardwalk. It's not a boardwalk. <laughs> Those pebbles are in under there and they come out during a walk. I'm not sure how cold the water is, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be a warm pond but I guess it is because it is a popular hangout place on the beach. You know, these animals live in harmony, but guess what? There's no human in it. So you'll see this growing on a lot of trees in Newfoundland. This is something that we always call old man's beard. And it's very good just if you pick it off, it's a good way to get a kindling started for a fire. I'm ashamed to admit it, but when I was a kid, I was a bit of a fire bug and I played with matches and I went out one day, took my matches or light or whatever it was, and I lit one of these, and it ignited the whole tree, and it just went the whole, and it was in a thick forest too, so I was scared to death that I was gonna start a forest fire, and I very nearly did. I'm so lucky that it just ignited the old man's hair, and the tree survived, and the forest survived, uh, but you know, that's one of the lessons you learn as a kid, I guess. I never did it again. Very important lesson, do not start forest fire. <laughs> if we had Smokey the Bear in Canada, he probably would have attacked me and mauled me to death. 
This is Labrador tea. You'll notice it's a fairly rough on the top, but on the bottom, it's got this brown stuff. And when you dry it out and put it into hot water, it makes a tea. I've never tried it, but we always knew what it was. <laughs> wow, my girl. Another thing that we can do here at National Park is joining some guided programs. ...that we get for this program tends to vary week by week. Um, Today, we're joining a guided program to learn about the indigenous cultures of the First Nations who live in Newfoundland, especially around Terra Nova. Down here, and you can see, it's pretty heavily populated. The culture... It's a very laid-back program where we learned about local practices, customs, and history as well as hearing personal stories shared by park rangers. That was pretty awesome. I've always been really open to learning about indigenous people. There's a few things that I actually learned there. I learned the difference between Mi'kmaq and Mi'kmaq. And of course, as a Newfoundlander, I didn't even know Mi'kmaq existed on this island until I came over here and they explained a little bit more about why they've been pretty much excluded from Newfoundland history and the struggle to get it back. So if you're coming to Terra Nova National Park, come to the visitor center. It looks like they do it a few times a week where they sit down with you and explain indigenous culture on the island. And it's really interesting. And bring your questions because the first thing they said, they said, don't worry about your language. Don't worry about maybe saying something wrong. They've heard it all before. They'll help you understand how to say things right. So it's totally worth it. Come bring your questions. You'll have a lot of fun. Time to check in at Terra Nova Campground for the night. Hello. I have a reservation for site 243 tonight, Michael Demons. We are here at the Newman Sound Campground. This is where also where we're gonna spend the night tonight. So. Little, 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 little bat show. Yeah, we are on our way to our second guided tour today, and it is officially called the Night Watch. This is where you're gonna learn about native bats here in Newfoundland, in Terra Nova. For the bat program, one of the park rangers was wearing a bat uniform. Smile. Awesome, thank you. Is that cool? <laughs> I'm gonna take it off. And one of the little girls was scared of it, so she's gonna go take it off. <laughs> so we're gonna go on our Night Watch this evening. Uh, if you're familiar with this trail at all, we're gonna make our way down to the little sandbar or sand spit. Here in Newfoundland, Labrador, we have three species of bats. Mosquitoes pretty bad. Yes, they are. My legs are getting eaten alive. That's a good news then. We'll be able to see a lot of bats. Yeah, maybe. You want them to crawl all over me. <laughs> well, can eat up to a thousand mosquitoes in an hour. So we really like having them For around. the next hour or so, we learned about the native bats while enjoying the evening stroll in Terra Nova. We're also hoping to spot any bats around using a bat-friendly flashlight. That was actually really cool. We unfortunately didn't see any bats, but we did get a good explanation of you know, where they are in the park, some of the stuff that the park is doing to help them, and uh, you know, information about white nose syndrome, which is making bats decline. But the tour ended at this really beautiful spot where in a little while, you're gonna, the stars are gonna come out because Terra Nova National Park is a certified dark sky area, which means that there's very little artificial light here. So it's gonna get beautiful pretty soon. Unfortunately, it's really hard to film stars, so with you know a setup like we do, so we probably won't be able to do that. But I recommend the walk. It's not that long, it's over a pretty good trail, and uh, they do it a couple of times a week. Oh, right behind me, I don't know, can you see it in the, in the, oh, in yeah. the film? Oh yeah. That's Venus. They asked the question and the kids didn't know the answer, so I answered. <laughs> Michael's a smart kid. I'm a smart ass is what I am. <laughs> I'm the person that always put up the hand for the teacher. Oh. And she'd look over me going, John, anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you ready to go back? Yeah. Awesome. Alright, let's go. You better turn off that light or... Oh, yeah. Do you want to turn it off right now? I grew up in a town called Clarenville, which is about an hour east of Terra Nova National Park. And because of that, Terra Nova National Park was kind of our playground when I was a kid. We used to come here every weekend to a cabin that we built up on Terra Nova Lake, about a half an hour away from here. So it was a very special place for me. That's what we're gonna do first. So right now we're driving to Terra Nova, which is actual town. It's not part of the national park. This is my first time up here in 35 years and it was where I had the happiest memories of my childhood. So I'm really getting a little goosebumpy about it. It's, uh, it's gonna be a pretty special overnight for me. 
Small town Canada. They only have one convenience store here in town of Terra Nova, and it's called the Dep. There used to be a time when it was dangerous to cross the eight mile bridge. From the town of Terra Nova, it's still a few more kilometers to get all the way to Terra Nova Lake. Five more kilometers. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Try uh, nine. As bumpy as it is, this road is a lot better than it used to be. My dad used to have a work van with nothing in the back, and that's what we used to come up in. And me and my brother and two sisters would have to sit on the coolers and all the supplies in the back. And we'd be bouncing around all the time. Sometimes we would let the dog out, and the dog would just run beside the van because we only drove so slow that the dog could keep up anyway. But now at least we can do 40 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Should do that kind of uh, run around. Even smaller road. We just gotta go back one road. It slots pretty well, I guess. Look at that. <laughs> so this is it, this is Terra Nova Lake. This is where I grew up when I was a kid. This was my weekends and my winters and a couple weeks in the summer at least. Uh, the lake is down quite a bit now. It's been down, I mean, several feet. But this is my happy place. We just checked in. By chance, there were some neighbors here that were here 35 years ago when we had our place. Long time family friends. Michael, how are you? I didn't expect to see really anybody. surprised to see them, so that was really nice. But we're going to take a walk along the beach right now and just check out some of the cabins that are here that have, I guess, evolved <laughs> a lot since 35 years ago. For me, Terra Nova Lake brings back so many memories of growing up here. So it feels nice to be back again. Just like in the old days, we ran into old cabin neighbors for a quick catch up. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So the machine off, but uh, this is so it's like a almost like a terror jet when you got the yeah, well. We all helped build this in some way or other. This was our place right here. It's been redone a bit. Uh, ours was more of a shack back at the time. The cabin next door here was a family friend. They sold it many years ago. It used to look a lot better. This is one of my favorite berries that I always picked. I like blueberries better, but partridge berries are pretty good. They're better after you freeze them because it brings out the sugars in them. They have a bitter taste if you just eat them off the vine. They're still good in my opinion, but after they're frozen, that sweetness comes out. Lots of blueberries here. Look at these. Oh my God. They're not as big as the ones we got the other day, but there's a lot more of them. Oh my God, it's all blue. Yeah, they just come off so easily and only the ones that are ripe come off with a gentle pull. Even if there's some there that aren't ripe. Michael's cheating with the blueberry rake. Not cheating. Any more cheating than it is driving up to the park instead of taking a chuck wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Bucket of blueberries. This rake also is really good at collecting choke cherries <laughs> right off the trees. These things are delicious, probably not so much on their own. Each one has a pit inside of it. You see, you can hear it. Can you hear that? Yeah. So there's a pit inside of it, which gives it a bitter taste. But what you do is you boil them and then you strain them through so the pits don't get in it. And uh, you make like jams and jellies out of it. So they just look like miniature versions of cherries and not as sweet. I don't know why they're called choke cherries. But it's probably choke you to death. No. <laughs> Oh, I'm sweaty from blueberry picking. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a place we always used to come and kind of party as kids away from our parents. It's actually named Sparks Cove, but for some reason we always pronounce it Sparks' Cove. So we're parked here for the night. We have a neighbor right here in a schoolie. It's a lot of broken glass. Yeah, I'm up here too, but yeah, it's definitely not in good condition whatsoever. And that's the inside of it. Still as cove as you remember it. Yeah. I really wish we could have got the van down there, but these rocks here, we could probably do it, but we don't need a thousand or two thousand dollar repair on the running boards. For dinner tonight, a little thing of broccoli and mushroom. Just right outside, Michael is cooking our steak by the schoolie. Look at that. Gotta love discounted meat. I feel so much less classy than the people next door. They probably go filet mignon. Can you please give me a big one of the, our big metal our big spoons, big normal spoons? Okay. Thank you. Gotta butter the steak. Ah, uh, it's gonna be a good dinner, Michael. I hope so. It's not Master Chef or anything. You are my Master Chef. I know, I try to be. You'd starve if it wasn't for me. Uh, <laughs> we are ready to eat. Hopefully, this came out okay. Oh, look at that. Gordon Ramsay, eat your heart out. <laughs> I did it. Wow. 
Phew. <laughs> this doesn't look very appetizing, but I love mushrooms and I love broccoli. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little piece then later. I'll save you a piece of steak, Connor. But first of all, let me see how it tastes. Well, that's really good, Hollow. <laughs> Guest of honor wants to try it. Connor, would you want some? Don't you take my finger off. Is it good? She didn't even taste that. You didn't even taste it. And that's all the human food she'll get today. The sun is going down here on Terranova Lake. I think just being here after 35 years just reminds me that all these people, even though I haven't seen a lot of them in 35 years, is I don't think that I'll ever experience family as much as the people that I grew up with here. Terra Nova was always my favorite place. Wishing that I could have one last party with them. <laughs> Simple life in Terranova. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that we couldn't get down on the beach. That would have been really nice to be down there. And this old bus wasn't here 30 years ago. But it's just that someone would leave it there like that really bothers me. Of course, Miss Kana is on dirt. Yep, she got a bath and of course her bed is right there. She wants to lie in it, but oh no. She's got to drag as much crap in here as possible. So today for breakfast, I made a hash browns with bacon and cheese and of course hash browns on the bottom actually bought them for 50 percent off at the superstore <laughs> oh it smells good actually i just smelled it it's because it's the bacon and cheese there's no way this is good for you excited i have my anxiety is up i don't know why i'm nervous about being here there's no reason to be this is where Michael grew up, and he hasn't seen it since 1986, which is what, 30 something years 35 ago? 35 years ago. That's crazy. Home sweet home. This is it. We're going in to the twilight zone. <laughs> Lastly, before we move on, we had a quick stop in the town of Clarenville, where I grew up. It certainly has changed quite a bit in the last 30 years. Oh my God, a traffic light. There were literally no traffic lights in this city, in this city, <laughs> in this town when I left here. That was there, that was, I remember that's a salt house, but there were no traffic lights. Now we, there's a, a bar and pub here. And this is it, this is where I grew up, right here in this house. Still for sale. I wouldn't buy it with all those trees like that on it. We always back in here to put the wood in in the morning or when we went and got wood. There's still a lot more of Newfoundland to see. So tag along with us by subscribing to our channel, as well as hit that notification bell. And thank you for watching. It's like a small town USA, but it's just not USA. Therefore, a small town Canada. I got a mouthful of cherry, so I can't talk. <laughs> Oh, they have a Canadian tire, eh? You're not going to make us any friends on this video. I, I, I blend in with local. No, you don't.